and welcome to another Sonic Lab. Today I'm back from holidays and I'm looking at the new Soma Terra. This is a really unusual looking instrument, isn't it? Uh, you might not even rec recognise it an instrument. It sort of looks a bit more like a breadboard um, not, or chopping board of some kind, but instrument it is. And it's yet another kind of really interesting concept from the mind of Vlad Kreimer, who is the sort of head uh, instrument designer and conceptualizer at Soma. This has been sort of on the cards for a little while. I think we saw it at Superbooth two Superbooths back where it was first seen. Everyone was kind of like, wow, that's crazy. What on earth is this? And that's a really fair question. What is this, in fact? Well, inside is a digital synthesizer. Uh, all DSP algorithms, lots of different algorithms uh, with different sort of modifiers and different sounds, but with a really interesting organic playing surface. It's all based around touch. So these are the 12 sensors for 12 notes, which can be tuned however you wish. So you can have them chromatic or all kinds of things. I think this one is... Uh... Most unusual, uh, to say the least. And these will then modify the sound. So depending on the algorithm you've loaded in and the program that it's running on, these will do different things. You can't access or program any of that stuff. So you're sort of you're given, you, you get what you're given from uh, from the algorithms they load in. But there are quite a lot there. So let's say just have a quick look at. Um, these pads, these are sort of like buttons, they're like little brass buttons, and they're capacitive, they've got this sort of lacquer on them, so to play them... You can hit them hard or really just touch them and get these very... ...responsive surface, and then on this side, these actually modify the sound, so... So in this case, it sounds like we're maybe uh, adding some kind of FM uh, feedback, so... And again, these are very sensitive as well. This is adding some kind of noise. And that's a more chaotic kind of pitch mod noise. And this one is then... modulating the pitch. Really quite interesting. Uh, also, there are other modifiers. So on the knobs up here, we have this knob here. If I go to uh, a bit closer up, this is the envelope, the release of the pitch knob, the pitch buttons. And then this is the release of the modifiers. So, so if I just go... Turn that up a bit. So we have a, we can have a release factor to the uh, sensors on this side and a release factor to the sensors on this side. It's also possible, depending on the algorithms, there seem to be some which are split, so you can have a certain sound on some of these sensors and a certain sound on the other. They go from monophonic to polyphonic, uh, drum kind of sounds. There's all kinds of things in there. I think perhaps the first thing for me to do is uh, play you a few sounds and then we'll talk a little bit about the other sensors as well. So these modifiers seem to bring in some kind of detune or... Uh, these buttons here, or the knobs here, they sort of are sound sculpting, so... in this one... seems to affect the speed of an LFO modulation in this particular algorithm. seems to bring in a kind of, sounds like a filter or a pitch depth envelope to give it that front end. Another sound. A bit more straightforward. 
Interesting pitch assignments to these, which you can modify. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Sort of koto. You can hear the, the really kind of epic reverb algorithm, which you can also switch to be delay, only one at a time. Just a single knob. Okay, let's get on to bank three, see what's in there. Maybe bank two. And more of a traditional pad sound. Interesting. some filtering going on here. And interesting harmonics. Oh, that's... Let's bring some reverb on here. You can really... Interesting harmonic sounds. Okay, here's a patch. Sort of brassy kind of. Modifiers will sort of add a. Sounds like a sort of pulse width almost, doesn't it? That's distortion. You can hear that there's some effects going on. And you can hear that the delay is happening. There's obviously a delay and a reverb in here. You also notice I've taken the bit of foam off. Um, that's because underneath, um, there's also a gyroscopic sensor in here. So if I then come back to here and I press, you can see that by moving it, I'm getting this kind of pitch bend, and I can also... If I go to my reverse shot, you'll be able to see... There's a, a gyroscopic sensor, which um, Vlad says, you know, sometimes this might be used to play on your lap, so you get a bit more of a, a kind of a total body experience for men, man, um, managing the gyroscopic pitch and a mod. You can change the sensitivity on this, make it a lot less, um, again, using this triangle sensor. So that changes it. But what I've got underneath here are these little, these little rings. Uh, if I go to this shot, maybe I can come in tight. You can see there are these, there are these sort of like little black I don't know what well, they come with it, and you can put them underneath every corner, and it gives you a little bit of sort of desktop action. Though I'd imagine uh, you're going to lose those pretty quick. A, they're black, and B, you know, who's going to remember to put them in the bag? So 
it's a little bit of a kind of um, hinterland in terms of where you might want to play this. Feels natural to play it on the desk, um, on the lap. It will work, but then you've got, you know, cables hanging out the back of it and you've got, you know, all of stuff attached. Anyway, some more sounds. Loading a sound, we press L. This is a, another touch sensitive button. So L uh, and then these little um, will come in tight. You can see in each of these, there's a little light. Uh, it's a little hard to see sometimes when you've got a lot of bright light, but it's, it's, it's visible enough. And that is for a bank of sounds. So if I go to, I'm in, still in bank one, or let's go to bank two. And now I press and then I can load from any one of the, tw the 16 steps. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you know, up to 16, which is a little bit weird, uh, obviously. So I'm just going to load, let's load this sound. Probably a little bit too sensitive on the gyroscope there. Maybe. And we've got an LFO in here. In this case, the, the water knob will affect the speed of the tempo-based effect. But another thing to notice in this patch, we've actually... We've kind of got two voices, so... Two mono voices, so we can go... goes from 5 to 12 and this is 1 to 4. So you can see these sort of layouts and setups are again they're kind of baked into the presets we don't have access to this stuff. So once we've loaded a patch um, as well as just sort of playing it with the modifiers there are a number of ways in which we can uh, explore other possibilities. So in this patch here let's take those out so there's nothing going on so this is my basic patch variation 1 changes the way that these modifiers work. Variation three, four, five, and then all of the... So going from essentially a basic sound to this is possible per patch. And I guess, you know, again, we can't access what these these sensors are doing what the variations are but if we decided we wanted to we liked that variation we can save it to a bank so if I go into the final bank and I'm just going to save it to patch D and I've got my hold button I press hold now I've saved it there with the variation so I've got this possibility to explore all of these um, variations which Yes, they're preset, but then I can save them in the state that I was kind of happy with. So there is a certain amount of user modification. Let's take a look at these buttons here, which are the transpose buttons and can be used for a number of different things. I'll bring a tuner in, try and put that somewhere where hopefully you can see the notes it's, it's displaying. Yeah, I think I can see that. So I've got a scale here that I've programmed. which is just a regular scale, which is quite uncommon amongst these presets. I program this myself. I'll show you how to do that uh, in a second. But these buttons kind of are the key to all the tuning. So on the top set, that's an octave, two octaves, both together is a fifth. So if I wanted to go up the scale, One octave. And then I go. 
as you can see, I'm not terribly familiar with it, but you can access it, certainly if you're tuned to a sort of more regular scale, your sort of muscle memory may well come into play to be able to access more notes than just those 12 sensors. However, most of the presets on here are using all sorts of really interesting notes and intervals, which I think is part of the charm, because what that actually does is get you to play much more uh, less likely, certainly polyphonic combinations and some create some really interesting intervals, um, but you can set those up yourself. Coming back again, uh, there's more to what these will do. We can transpose the entire keyboard. So if I press that and that, so we can see we're in C, the kit's kit C of C. I might want to transpose that to the key of D. So now So I can transpose the whole keyboard, but I can also tune the individual notes on here as well. And this is where we get into the microtoning, as micro tuning. So I press the tuning peg, which is this button in the middle. So that's my C. I could go up in semitones. but I can also go into microtoning tunings. So if I press and hold, you can see that the tuning of that individual note is kind of moving around. So we can tune them over quite a wide range. The scale settings are saved with a preset. So as I set this all up, I save my preset, and that's the tuning that will apply to that preset. I would love to have seen a way to store and recall user presets for the scale settings, so for these notes, so that you could apply them to any preset or perhaps globally, a sort of separate area. But unfortunately, that's not the case. But Vlad has literally just uh, uh, released a bit of firmware, which I've loaded into here, which allows you to uh, recall the scale from another existing preset. Remember, the scale settings are saved with an actual sort of sound preset rather than a tuning preset. It allows you to impose the scale from another preset onto an existing preset. So in this patch... I've got that scale, but if I want to bring it in, I've got, I actually programmed another scale, which is more of a major scale, in another preset. So I press L and tuning, and that's in that bank, and then I'm over here on the A, and now... I've got my tuning scale there. So there is a workaround. It's a bit clunky, and I would have liked to have seen a more elegant way, and maybe there still will be, because I know that the firmware is currently under review, and, you know, it's being worked on all the time. But that's how you handle all of these tunings. But the, the fact that we've got micro-tuning and the ability to have all kinds of weird intervals is sort of what makes it attractive. I'm not sure I'd want to program them all, <laughs> but it's nice to see that in the presets that we've got, there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, if I come here, let's just load a random preset. Oh, actually, I need to be in bank one. Let's load this one. Oh, it's a bit hard to, to hear. So that's... What's this one? C, D, F, G, B flat, C. You know, there's some interest. So that means that when we... Whoops, here, hold that. We'll end up with some interesting and unique voicings. And that's... This is lovely for creating these sort of weird soundscapes with interesting intervals. And bearing in mind, we've got all these additional harmonic content that we can bring in via the modifiers. I did mention about drums earlier, and here's a patch that I found. Uh, this is in bank two, and I think it's in C. We've got kick. And sort of cymbals. It's a little bit unfamiliar because I'm used to finger drumming, which has a specific layout, but... And then the modifiers... This seems to affect the bass drum. 
this the, the snary clap, and this the pitch of the cymbals. Anyway, I just thought I'd uh, throw that in there because I had mentioned that it had drums. Um, so uh, let's load another patch. Let's find a polyphonic one. Yeah, that's quite a sort of dreamy, vibey one. So there is another way uh, which we can also change up the sounds quite radically, and that is by switching algorithms on the fly. So I've loaded this patch, and this is... <laughs> ..using the delay, it's all rather lovely. Now, if I want to change the algorithms, remember there are 32 in here, I press the engine button. So let's start with... I guess, naught, whatever this this engine is. And there is, uh, I'm sure there's a table in here somewhere, but to be honest, I don't think me telling you what they are is going to make all that much difference because there's no naming on this unit anyway. So let's just explore a few of them. So now... This sounds like a kind of car plus strong type engine. Let's go... Interesting. Changing the engine will affect what these knobs do plus what the modifiers do. But from that initial sound, I've now got something... Really sort of digital and distorted. Let's change to this one. This is a vocal sample, or vocal synthesizer. Very interesting. Let's try... Uh, next one would be... This one, very basic. Some really unusual ones in here. So uh, I guess the next one is going to be... Suffice to say, there's quite a broad range of sounds and mix and match, though, as I said, we can't get into the, the sort of details of the synthesis. These are very much kind of algorithms that I guess they may still be updated. I mean, you just plug a USB port in, uh, stick in the side and then the code and the firmware can be updated. That may well include more engines as well. There is another function with the engine button, uh, with the engine button, and if I press and hold, it's this top sensor here. So I've got this sound. Which is very pleasing. Now, if I press E and the top button, what this actually is doing is halving the sample rate. So it means that it gets a little bit more crusty, but also it means the delay and the reverb are twice as big, which, <laughs> when it comes to the sort of thing I like, you can imagine that's quite good, so... So if I... So if we take the time down... I'm going to tur turn it into reverb mode.
So, let's uh, flip a few more presets. So I'm just going to go to bank four, and this is sort of arpeggiator, because we've got arpeggiator in here as well. There are some great... Oh, here's one of the vocal ones. This is presumably the algorithm that's loaded into the program that makes it sound at its best. I mean, yeah, it might have limited use, it has quite a novelty value, but it just shows the sort of range of synthesis engines there are in there. So really, I should talk about what it's actually like to play, because it's quite an unfamiliar thing. So if I just come to this shot here, let's just see, hear this sound. The sensitivity... ..on both the pads really just takes a little bit of getting used to and kind of organising your fingers. But it's I can't help but, you know, point out that because the allocation of all the notes are sort of completely random, you know, it might not be programmed in a major scale. It may be a variety of other different scales. It means that the muscle memory or knowing where you're putting your fingers is actually quite difficult, unless you tune the whole instrument to a sort of a single key or a single scale that really suits or maybe a two or three that really suit you know the way you like to hear things or the way you play it's going to be quite hard to have a repeatability in terms of pitch on this but it is incredibly sensitive it's just also incredibly unfamiliar i think the key is really kind of using your ears and just feeling what pleases you, which I think is very much the sort of philosophy of how Vlad likes to operate. But in terms of learning an instrument to be able to do repeatable performances, it's probably of limited use unless you're prepared to spend a long time kind of learning that or, like I say, applying the scales you like to every single patch, which frankly would take quite a long time. However, you can't deny you can quickly get into a sort of a really nice flow-like state with this because it's very pleasing to play alone and that may well suit you. I think if you're considering and forming a band <laughs> using this as a centrepiece, it might require a little bit more work. But when you get into a patch like this, and you've got all that kind of ambient vibe going on. stuff like tune that down a fifth and hold it and then the keyboard returns when you've taken your re-triggering brings this note back up again sort of get lost in the moment and there's no denying it's a really pleasing experience to play sort of solo. I mean I'm sure if I had a friend jamming or in this case I've got the uh, RC 
505 Mark II, which I could just record loops into, and because I can just change patches and then transpose, it's, it's quite a nice sort of solo jamming experience. And I think if you're working to picture or you're, you're into the sort of drone or ambient stuff, then this could be a really interesting way for you to discover kind of new textures, new intervals, new ways of playing, new sort of notes that perhaps if you're always falling into those same patterns again, this will certainly challenge those kind of norms that you are maybe returning to every time you pick up your usual instrument. There's also a MIDI controller mode whereby the Terra can transmit MIDI in a variety of different ways. OK, so to set the MIDI uh, control mode, we press L, tune and you can just see it here, the top hold button. And then that shows us these two buttons here. If they're not lit, we're not sending anything. If the top one is lit, we're now sending velocity and notes via the V12 and control via these. Uh, I've got it plugged into the Roland S1 just via the adapter. And Like the gyroscope's working here, but it may just be. Oh, yeah, there we go. I found that was a bit hit and miss, but the gyroscope will also output pitch bend. Uh, I will just mention that there is. I've got a patch here which, it, which has got the arpeggiator, and that's not actually going to via the MIDI out, just in case you were wondering. Uh, so the other mode is this mode in which all of these will output controllers. Actually, in the first mode, these will output some kind of control data, but not... But uh, these are fixed, and it really depends on what the patch is going on here for it to, you know, have any effect. Uh, in the second mode, it's all MIDI control. So if I just press play on here, these are now just sort of sending out arbitrary uh, controllers. Again, these are fixed. I don't know what they're mapped here, so it's it's a bit hard to tell. Uh, but And then the third mode is MPE mode, which obviously this isn't working with and I haven't got anything I can plug it into. But we'll come back to MIDI 1. And we've got got a gyroscope on here, and funnily enough, on the S S1. If I press hot, we've got double gyroscope action, in case you ever need such a thing. <laughs> as far as MIDI in goes, uh, a clock will be sent, can be sent into the MIDI in, and that will run the LFO clock and the arpeggiator clock, uh, as far as I know. There's also a CV mode, and that's where this adapter, which comes with the unit, comes in. Uh, this actually is not a MIDI to uh, stereo input, uh, you know, mini, uh, uh, mini jack input. This is actually a CV to clock. So if I had a CV or a trigger coming in here and I plug it into the input, it will be red in CV mode via the MIDI input for clocking. So you can clock this via MIDI input or via CV input. So, is the Terra for you? That's a very good leading question. I think it's probably something that you, if you're into pushing the boundaries of your normal creativity and you want something that's wildly different, like with all of their stuff, it's a time investment, uh, but what you can get out of it is not what you're going to find anywhere else. It's definitely very interesting. I suppose the, the, there are competitors. I mean, you've got to look at the Osmos, which is a little more expensive. Uh, this actually is priced at, I think it's €1,300 Euros plus VAT and shipping, so it could go up to about €1,600, €1,700. Euros. Uh, I think it's priced a sort of perfect circuit for uh, 15 So, you know, it's a chunk of change, but it's a bespoke and very unusual instrument that, you know, can't be just sort of stamped out in a factory and or made in software. It's something that has a very unique 
and different approach. So the Soma Terra is not going to be for everybody, but there are a hell of a lot of people who really like the way that they approach things. So if you get the chance, I would try one out, and then you never know, you might find that it's just the thing. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, you will find, as ever, more content on our Patreon. We much appreciate your support. See you next time. Thank you.